What is going on, you sexy mofos? I was loaned an Aston Martin DB11 by Galpin Aston Martin. And thank you guys so fucking very much because this, this is a car that's putting a bigger smile on my face than I ever thought it would. So this is not the replacement to the Vanquish, the DBS, or any of those cars that you've seen before. This is a replacement to the DB9 line, like the smaller line with a bigger engine that we had before. Not the small like Vantage or anything like that, or the big boy, the uh, Vanquish, which is gonna be replaced by a DBS very soon. This is that platform in there. This is a $220,000, $250,000 car. So now let's get to it immediately. The first thing that changes completely from all the other Astons from before is they put a twin turbo V12 engine that does, as you can tell, a lot of wonders, a lot of wonders. It's incredible to drive. It's a V12 twin turbo, produces 600 horsepower, takes the car from zero to 16, a little bit over three seconds. You don't need any more than this. And this is such a comfortable and sexy looking piece. Oh, I just wanted to share with you guys a few things I didn't know about this car that you might find interesting. Number one, the aluminum hood is the biggest aluminum piece of any production car on the market right now. Some of you are gonna say, what about the ACR? That's not made of aluminum. So there's that. Not only that, but it's got a soft close function. So whenever you drop it, the car will take care of everything and you can open it and close it just with one hand and one person alone. You don't need to put this entire show and do all these theatrics for it to close. Number two. Aston Martin, for the first time ever, like I said, went into this car with a twin turbo V12 and it didn't take away any of the noise from the car, which is awesome. Now, the point is not that it's a V12 twin turbo and the noise is great. The point number two is that depending on how you want to start the car, it'll start. What do I mean by that? I mean, if you want a quiet car, then you're going to keep that start engine button pressed. Ah, much more quiet. It's quiet mode. But if you want the car to make all the noise that you want it to really make when you start the car because it's not too early, all you need to do is get in the car and press start. And then it's gonna give you the full enchilada. Yeah. Which is awesome, no other car does that. Every other car also forgets what mode you put them on. So that's great and different from all others. Number three, every single bit of this interior is handmade, except, except, for the seats, the, the shape of the seats are made by Recaro. But the leather, every single bit of like plastic, metal, leather, carbon fiber, anything you see in here is handmade by someone in England at the Aston Martin factory. And can I tell you, this is one of the most delicious interiors I've ever seen. So the craftsmanship really, really shows. This is no joke. I'm actually obsessed with this thing right now. So uh, I'm sorry, I'm freaking out. Next thing. Downforce plays a humongous part in this car. So Aston Martin has been racing for a while. They actually just uh, won the smaller category in Le Mans. And uh, they use all of that and put it into these cars. It's not as exaggerated as you would think because this is supposed to be a very comfortable GT, but it's got a lot of aero. And you know what that does. That sticks the car to the ground and makes it go faster than you can possibly do or feel very confident while driving at higher speeds, if you will. So on the front, you had the louvers right here, like on the GT3 RS, but they're inside of the car. The air comes out of the sides. And also on the back, you got like the ACR effect. You have the two intakes that are actually pushing that air that is coming from here and it goes out through the trunk. It's so dope, but it's well done because in the ACR, it looks like two dudes just put two hoses and they're like, ah, fuck it. But this is an Aston Martin. It's supposed to be nice. And I think they accomplished the shit out of that one. Another thing this car does that no other car does that I'm aware of is depending on where you're sitting, the car will throw you AC according to your driving position and where the sun is hitting the car the most. So if your passenger is sitting here and the sun is hitting it like straight up, the car is actually not gonna overwhelm you with the heat. It's gonna throw more AC that way to make sure that that guy, your dude that you're taking with you is covered and cooler. So the car will actually adjust the AC output based on the sun, on the sun's direction, on where you're sitting in the car, if you have one or two uh, people and how tall those guys are and how they're sitting. Fucking brilliant. Another thing they do with this car is whenever you open the door and you stick your hand, that's right, and you stick your hand right in. 
uh, it actually opens up a little handle and it's like you're shaking the car's hand. Aston Martin wants you to have and build a relationship with your car from the moment you touch it. And that's the way in. It's like, come on inside. So it's like a very polite girl. She'll let you in. And last but not least, one of my favorite features because it saves you money and it saves gas. It has cylinder deactivation. So this is a V12. I've, I think I've said it only 39 million times. So uh, it's a V12, but whenever you're driving it like at this speed right now and you're not in sport, you're in GT, which is cruising mode, the car only runs in six cylinders. That's right, so you're using half the engine to run the car at low speeds while cruising right now, which I can't, I don't have to explain you what he does, right? Saving gas, saving the world, saving the environment, all of that good stuff. Hey, who would have thought I'm a better person for driving this Aston Martin? Just, I'm gonna try to pitch that to my wife, actually. Honestly, this is a great car, very comfortable GT, so Aston Martin's not building a car to go and compete on a track, even though you can totally take it to the track and it'll be fun, because you can feel the downforce playing a big role in this, and the engine has got more than enough power in it to supply for that. But this is more of a long GT cruising car that you wanna take your wife with you on long road trips, or your friends with you on long road trips, especially if you live in Europe or down the coast here, going to Santa Barbara, oh, this is where that car is gonna shine. Not everything is about lap times, and this is one of the sexiest things I have ever seen that proves that. So, this is more about fun, this is more about enjoyment, this is about cruising, this is about relaxing. Like, this is relaxing for a car guy. Relaxing for a car guy, wow. Honestly, I am loving it. The suspension is great, the three modes, GT, Sport, Sport Plus, big difference every time you touch one of these. And the most important thing in Aston Martin, which they fixed, which I love because now Daimler has a stake in Aston Martin. I think it's a 5% stake. They're providing with all of the electronics. So if you see the trackpad, if you see the screen, it reminds you a lot of the Mercedes one, which is a great interface. Not only because it's Mercedes and I've had a lot of them. Oh, look at me, Mercedes collector. But because it's honestly great. The older Astons were, we're like using a Game Boy, if you will. This is like HD, 3D, Blu-ray shit, if Blu-ray is still like a new thing. But if not, you know what I'm saying. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna leave you with that so that I don't bore you to death. I love this fucking thing. Thank you so very much for watching. I'm Alejandro, and I do, I actually approve this message. Fuck it, I approve it, I approve it. Let, let it know, let it be known, Ivan.